Hey everyone welcome to our channel Mental Game, today, we are going to talk about 11 days of effective communication. Now let's begin. Effective communication is the process of exchanging ideas, thoughts, opinions, knowledge, and data so that the message is received and understood with clarity and purpose. When we communicate effectively, both the sender and receiver feel satisfied. Day 1, Listen. Before you even think about your responses to other people, you need to sharpen your listening skills. Poor communicators think that, listening, is merely the act of waiting for their turn to speak all while mentally composing their response. This is a grave mistake. Listening is so much more. It's a way of providing someone else the chance to share their thoughts and ideas, to build emotional intimacy, and to show empathy. Although taking advice from someone else can be useful, we are most likely to change for the better if we work through our problems out ourselves. 1. Use non-intrusive verbal and non-verbal signals to encourage them to keep talking. Like hmm, uh. 2. Let them keep going until they run out of steam. 3. Do not play the role of armchair psychologist. 4. Do not interrupt with unsolicited advice. Resist the urge to tell them that you know exactly what they are going through. People experience things differently. 5. Rephrase someone else's words, but don't parrot them back. 6. Check your assumptions. We all tend to view the world through the lens of our own preferences and experiences. Practice. Phone a friend unexpectedly. Listen to him for 20 minutes. Reread this chapter and assess your listening skills. Day 2. Do not interrupt. Count how many times you interrupt. 1. Set target and reward yourself. 2. Remind yourself. 3. Write down points you want to make. 4. Remember silence is as influential as your voice. 5. Practice biting your tongue. Practice. Count the number of times you interrupt. Day 3. Become an inclusive communicator. Gender, race, orientation neutral. Practice. Watch a TV show and assess and learn from it. Day 4. How to expand your vocabulary. There is a link between vocabulary and occupational success, as it is best foundation for communication, and communication is the starting point for success. When you have more words at your disposal, you are in a better position to deliver exactly the right message. 1. Use a new word every day. Get into the habit of looking up a new word each morning, and then using it at some point during the day. If no other way, share that you have learned a new word. 2. Use app or online. Free rice. Power vocab. 7 little words. 3. Become a word enthusiast. Learning words in isolation will help grow your vocabulary but gaining a deeper appreciation of a word structure and roots will put you in a good position to understand new words you encounter in the future. 4. Read widely. Don't stick to the same books and magazines that you normally read. Challenge yourself by exploring new topics and by reading denser and more challenging text. Set aside at least 15 minutes of reading time each day. In my opinion, there's no excuse not to read. 5. If you aren't sure what a word means, ask. It's normal to feel embarrassed when someone uses a word that you don't recognize, but it's a golden opportunity to learn something new. If you really can't ask, at the time, at least make a note of the word and look it up later in your dictionary. Put it into practice. Exercise I. Today, I want you to learn 5 new words and then incorporate them into your spoken or written communication. Exercise 2. Take a look at the apps and websites mentioned in this chapter and commit to using one of them for at least 5 minutes each day for a week. Day 5. Swap but for and and embrace yet. What most people don't realize is that a typical but statement is unnecessarily limiting and negative. Simply putting yet on the end of a negative statement can transform its meaning. Whenever you make a negative statement or bemoan that you are lacking some kind of resource, stick a yet on the end. Day 6. Limit your I talk and add we talk instead when to use i 1 when you are being assertive 2 when you are sharing personal controversial opinion 3 when you want to claim credit of idea day 7 practice saying thank you thank you is one of the most important phrases in our language human relationships are built on shared interests and good communication but also on mutual acts of service 1 build on a bear thank you a simple thank you is always appreciated but there's a quick trick that will ensure you leave a lasting impression Using a few extra words, tell someone precisely what has filled you with gratitude. 2. Offer to repay their kindness. If someone has gone out of their way to help you, offering them assistance in return will demonstrate your appreciation. 3. Never reject a compliment. I think most of us are occasionally guilty of brushing off a compliment or piece of praise. Even a well-timed compliment can be enough to make some of us blush with modesty but arguing with someone trying to compliment you is rude. The only appropriate response is a sincere, thank you, I'm so glad you think so, or similar. 
put it into practice. Exercise I. Today, your challenge is to find opportunities to express thanks and gratitude. Exercise 2. If possible, take it one step further and make time to tell a loved one how much you value their ongoing help and support. You could even call them up just to tell them how wonderful they are. Day 8. Ask questions that get results. When you need to uncover information fast, what do you do? Ask questions, of course. 1. Build up gently to high pressure situation. No one likes having an important question sprung upon them. Show some empathy for their position. 2. Ask open-ended questions to explore and closed-ended to confirm. 3. Never assume that you know in advance what someone is going to say. Give them your full attention and be ready with a few phrases you can use if they share some shocking information. 4. Ask question to help others to hone in on the issue. 5. Ask question in a neutral way don't make your own biases plain. Day 9. Refine your voice and speaking style. It's not just what you say but how you say it. Speaking at a suitable volume and pitch will make other people more inclined to listen to you. We all know people who aren't especially brilliant or interesting but still know how to engage a crowd. 1. Lower the pitch of your voice. Research has demonstrated that people who speak in a low pitch are perceived as more confident and competent than those who talk in a breathy voice. Practice. Sitting and standing up straight, taking deep breaths, and then counting slowly from 1 to 5 as you exhale. Taking up yoga and breath-based meditation practices will help relax your muscles and ensure a consistent flow of oxygen around the body. 2. Smooth and stable sound. Use vocal exercises to develop a smoother voice. If your voice tends to quiver, particularly when you are under stress, you need to practice keeping it smooth and stable. Take a deep breath in, then exhale at a steady rate while making a hissing sound. Repeat this several times. Tongue twisters also help you practice speaking in an even tone. Try saying three free throws, strange strategic statistics, or another difficult phrase repeatedly until it becomes easy. Repeat these exercises a few times per day. Here's another exercise that will help you develop a sharper, cleaner voice. Moving up and down your vocal range say, nay, 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 ten times over. Repeat this exercise daily. 3. Cut out any verbal tics. Aside from, um, other frequent offenders include, like, yeah, and, you know. They are okay in moderate but if you use them repeatedly, your listeners will assume that you aren't really sure what you are talking about. Count the number of times you use the words and phrases listed above. The results might surprise you, but they will spur you to action. 4. Vary the pitch and tone of your voice. Keeping your voice relatively low will make you sound more authoritative. However, speaking in a monotone will just bore everyone around you. Let yourself express some emotion. For example, it's fine to raise your voice in surprise or to adopt a softer tone when comforting a friend. Day 10. Focus on behavior, not character. If you start analyzing their personality and passing harsh judgments on their character, you will find yourself drawn into an argument about what they are really like. This is a total waste of time and will harm the relationship. Put it into practice. Today, you are going to have a conversation with someone who has recently hurt or inconvenienced you. It will help clear the air and get your relationship back on track and practice talking about a problem in terms of someone's actions. You are not going to make character judgments. Create Create drama or drag up the past just for the sake of hurting them. Day 11. Uncover your communication background. Your parents or have influence on your communication and social relationships. Understand what impact they had. Identify areas which you would like to change and model people who are good at those areas. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, so we can keep making them. For more videos subscribe this mental game channel and remember to click on the notification. Also be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.